Pilipinas, hindi po magkansawa, he will be fascinated. Takulaon pong maray ang konvento. Kahit kung panahon ko, if you have a large convent, that already reflects the economic status of your locality. Mayamanong pong maray ang kansawa. And as you will see that in the evidence in the records here, you will be impressed by the fact that Kagsawa was not only resilient, but the developmental agenda of Kagsawa was sustainable for century. So, the kulaong pong maray ang ano rin. By the way, uh, ini po nagiging part ng, ining lecture na sa part of the coffee table book that Mayor and uh, Mayora had commissioned, and of course the council commissioned me to work on, and I think one of the towns, one of the few towns, I think they are the first town, to put up a coffee table aside from the city of Naga that they also commissioned me to work so, but then uh, draft lang po yan initial na yora yan pong ano initial na ano, we changed that uh, cover on this so, a panoramic journey so anyway ako na akong pong marayaan sa indong uh, uh, sa indong kundento that's a news one but you will notice also po ini yung belfry our traditional notion is a belfry is simply where the bell is hung to summon the people the church but that's actually the only purpose of the belfry. The other purpose of the belfry is to alert the people if the moros are coming. If you will notice, there's a river here and it goes all the way to Sowangan, the entry point for moro raids and for other foreign invaders. As you notice, and you probably see that in your history, by about 1620s, Kagsawa was invaded by the Dutch. And not only Kagsawa, but the entire Albay. It was raided by the Dutch. So, learning from that experience, the church authorities realized that they had to use also the church as their first line of defense. Kaya, nagkansin na ring belfry, not only to summon the people to attend masses, but also to alert the people if the morals are coming. So, in the shoreline of Albay, somebody would shout that if ever they, they generally put a uh, Balwarte, a watchtower, and they would shout, if ever they saw Moro Binta approaching Albaygo, they would shout, Ay Moros in La Playa! There are Moors in the shoreline. So they would ring the bell, announce that to the next town, so that the next town would also ring the bell to the next town. I think you call that in contemporary uh, revolutionary terms as Pasang Bilis. And that's what they were doing before. But not only that they put up bells there, they also put up cannons. So, nahiling po nindu, mangalas ko, matakadakot opening ang bell free. It's not only because people are there watching out to the people and looking at a view of the of Kaksa, but no. The other purpose there is they install a cannon so that when the Moors attack, they will find their cannon. So that's that's the other reason for And we do not un encounter that in our traditional history unless you do your research in the in the archives in Spain. So, sarap pa yan. Ini po ang lugar na ito. You notice, on the other side po kayan, the, the, Spaniard, the Spanish planners generally adopted a particular kind of an urban plan which is applicable to throughout the Spanish Empire. They call it the Plaza Complex. Ang Plaza Complex is, yaon dyan ang simbahan, yaon dyan ang munisipyo, yaon dyan ang eskulahan, and then yaon ang plaza. If you go to the other side, may mahiling po ka mong ruins dyan. That is what you call the tribunal, and I don't think it's still existing on the other side, but I saw that 20 years ago. That is the tribunal. That is the municipal building. Okay. Yan po ang municipal building. Uh, at one time, Garamitig Kaag na Marquez dyan na sinasabi na uh, uh, they call it, um, uh, they, they have a term for that, but I think it's an, it's an error because that is not referring to the building but to a certain office. But so, at one time, so, but not, but not, uh, for a long time, it was not here. Kaya itong panahon pa nakaagsas tarong marker dyan, pero I think it's not right. But then, so itong tribunal, uh, yaon po yan ang, yan, in between po kanin belfry ini, and that building there, that open space is what you call the plaza. That is applied throughout the Spanish Empire. So, basta kung may banwaan, may pueblo, pero may plaza complex. And what do you find here? There is a certain, I think I, there was a ruin there at one time. I suspect it was a school building. Why? Generally, well-off towns would always have school buildings. 
even in the early years of their existence. So kung naidali po kamo dyan ngayon, triangular na ano, I think it was the school building of Kagsawa when it was founded a town. If you will notice, gura na po kararong ining pagkatambun ni Dikan Laba sa Kagsawa. Actually, misconception po yan that Kagsawa was covered by lava. That's during the 1814 eruption. That's not true. The records existing in the Spanish archives would suggest that it was only covered in some parts by about one meter and some parts less. Kaya kung mahilig po nindu, kababawon. In fact, the people... Sorry, anyway. In fact, the people here did not want to abandon Kagsawa after 1814. Apparently because Kagsawa was very... Was very very well off. So taku na ang pumbaga yan. So anyway, to see, to go back in time, so we look at the PowerPoint presentation because I'll show you some documents which will be contained in the book that we are coming up with soon. Can we now proceed to the next slide? Of course, this is a late 19th century map of Albay, but then it's not very visible here because of the light. So then you can see the towns there. Uh, available na iyaon na ano, ang mga uh, ang, ang mga banwaan haros by the late 19th century. And we now proceed to the next morning. Now, ano po tatig di dipigtugtog ang banwaan kang kagsawa? This is a, a known fact among historians that mountains and volcanoes are generally regarded as the abodes of gods. Kaya kung hiliwan po nindo, uh, di bio, ang mga vulkan sa Pilipinas pero may associated with God. Like for example, Mount Canlaon sa Visayas. Ang Canlaon is the name of their God named Laon. Laon in Visayan is very, very old. So the Visayans associated their God as in terms of its old age. So Canlaon. Mount Diwata, I think it's in Davao. So Diwata is a goddess also of the Visayans. Then Mount Apo, Apo in the pre-colonial Philippines means ancestors, but then the spirits of the ancestors become their gods. So Mount Apo is the mountain of their ancestors. Mount Asub in Iriga. Mount Iriga used to be called Mount Asub. The word Asub was actually a pre-colonial uh, uh, priest, priest who has two genital organs, male and female. So he becomes a priest. So Mount Asub. Uh, Mount Mayon, according to a Visayan uh, chronicler, Fray Alonso Mentrida, who published a dictionary in the early 1600s, sabi niya ang Mayon da is the name of a goddess. So, it has nothing to do, apparently, based on this. Baho talaga siya nag-refer sa Magayon. Not, it, 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 was, it was not derived from Magayon. Because apparently, if you look at the dictionary, all, the oldest, the first dictionary in Bicol, written by in 1600s, there was no word for Magayon among the Bicolano. We use Magansay, but not Magayon. We also use the word Maganda, this is Tagalog, but actually the Bicolans were using that. But I have been looking for this in the pages of that dictionary. I could not find the word Magayon. So it appears that Mayon Volcano did not come from the corruption of the word Magayon. Okay? But it probably comes from Namayong because it looks like an umbrella. And there seems to be a basis for that, that Mayon Volcano could have come from an umbrella. Because if you look at one time, siguro kung cloudy days, nakapayungan, magayungan baga ang view ka na no, it appears like, it looks like an umbrella for the Almayans. And I think it's very meaningful that despite the fact that it, uh, it throws fire, it also, provide, it also provides cover to the people because of their resilient character. So, so yan po. But then the town, when it was founded here, in this place, ano tayo po din kang sawa? So you can connect that with the mystical dimension of a volcano. That why was it that it was called kang sawa? In the pre-colonial Philippines, priestesses known as Gobailan in the Visayas or Katulunan in Tagalog and Balyana in Bicol were generally described as wearing pythons on their waist when they performed ritual. So, it seems to suggest that Kagsawa could have been derived from a native priestess, the one who performs rituals wearing a python on the waist. So he was a Kagsawa, an owner of Sawa. And generally, as I said, the snake is always associated 
with mystical dimension in the pre-colonial Southeast Asia because they always associate the snake as the epitome, the symbol of reincarnation. The and reason for that, because a snake that keep on changing the scales and it symbolizes rebirth and rebirth and rebirth. And therefore, as you know, affected by the Hinduism concept of the karmic cycle, we are actually moving on to that particular cycle of rebirth and rebirth. And the snake played a crucial role in the culture of the Philippines because we have been Hinduized as early as the 13th century and definitely kadakon po itang words na halik sa Hindu text guru sa po yan gurang alin sa Hindu essentially yan po ang ano can we go to the next so yan po ang most proud origin and name ng itang sawa we go to the next slide please this is a very very old document written in 1574 okay uh, sa Archivo General de Indias. Sa kitang pong basa, if you are going to attend to that, you must be familiar with so-called paleography of the 16th century. But then there are several names there that are very visible. Pero po dyan na-mention na rin, Tuburan, Tundon, Libot, Tugmon, Maoraro, Kansawa, Tandan, Tambu, Busay, Lakaw, Banay, Kansawa. And that, Kansawa in the Rayan. It's probably Kansawa, Kansawa is Kansawa definitely, and the Rayan could be Naraga. Therefore, it shows that these values existed even before the coming of Spain. Because in 1574, they were the Spaniards who just came into the Nipo region. So, we need to say, these settlements, so Tuburan, Tundun, probably, we don't know, Libot, Kutmon, probably somewhere in Ginobatan or Kamalik, whatever, but you know better, gusto mo sabihin kaya, nag-i-exist na sila before the Spaniards arrived in Europe. And these are incontrovertible documents. These are documented uh, materials. So, okay. Then we now proceed to the next. Si say po ang nagpaong kang kagsawa. Sa rin pong bagay na interesante, ang nagpaong po sa'yo is a santo. He was a saint. Si Fray Francisco, uh, Fray Pedro de Bautista. In fact, when niya na February 6, ang nagaadi. The Archdiocese of Kassar celebrates his uh, birth, I think it was his birthday, uh, martyrdom, February 5. They would celebrate in Naga, kung magiling yung sunita titled, may martyrs in the demand that they're celebrating in the martyrdom. And because he was martyred in Japan in 1597. But then he was, he founded Kagsawa in 1587. Uh, uh, in fact, ang tamalig yung santo, si Fray Pedro, si Fray Francisco de la Parilla, who was an infirmarian of the hospital at Kamalik. One of the earliest hospitals in the Philippines was established in Kamalik. And so, sa nurse dyan dito was a saint. So, eventually canonized a saint in the 1860s together with Pedro de Bautista. So, yan po ang signature ni Pedro de Bautista but then, it should be your pride that is a rare opportunity to have a saint founding a particular locality. And kamo po yan. Now, let's go to it. He was a Franciscan, by the way, so you are a Franciscan mission. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, this is a, uh, if you want to look at your history, this is the source of the information uh, on the bounding of the uh, Kagsawa as a Franciscan mission. Kagsawa, uh, Kagsawa, Kagsawa, this is the title of the book. Um, and, na mention na pang enot na pinagbaptize dito sa ito. Si Kal Aki ni Kalitig Tabao, and Nulmog, ang Nulmog babae. So, si Kalitig Tabao was probably the chieftain and ang Aki Ninga was named Pedro Tabao. Apparently, because the one who baptized him was Fray Pedro de Bautista. It has always been a tradition before that the priest who baptized the child, eventually, the, the child adopts the name of the priest. So, there is a very, very high probability that the first Christian of Kagsawa was baptized by Pedro de Bautista in the person of Kalitig, Tabao, and Dolmo. So, kamulan po, one of the few towns here na may pangaran ng si founding fathers na native sa inyo. Hindi po yan, duwang yan. Si Nulmo was a woman. So, probably, I was trying to look for the meaning of the word Nulmo as a name that I could not find. Okay? So, let's go to the next slide, please. This is another document, 1594. Si document ni ka mga banwaan na iguanan yung mga parokya. So, what we have is San Thiago de Libon, San Pedro de Pulangi, San Miguel de Oa, San Juan Bautista de Camarines. Camarines, of course, is not the province. It's Camalig. The original name of Camalig was Camarines. 
Okay? So, Katsuwa was not yet included in the list. Tano po tanay ka bali pa yan ang Katsuwa? Because it was just a visita ag Kamadi. So, all the, 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 the towns listed there were already Pueblos and not and Katsuwa was not a Pueblo then. Let's go to the next place. So, it's not easy to write history. Very difficult to read the documents. Can we now go to the next? So, ini po ang mga available data kung paano nagpun mag-develop ang Kagsawa. From this country, it takes about 16 points, sabi niya, from one mountain to the are four leagues. So, four leagues times for 16 kilometers sali is kamalit, kamalit ang uh, Kagsawa. So, it has 1,500 Christians at Isita called Kagsawa, which has 2,000 Christians. So, as early as 1620, you now have 2,000 residents. Would you believe po, ang 2,000 residents was a requirement to create a locality into a town. You must have a population of 2,000. But that was in the 19th century. Meaning to say, 200 or 300 years earlier, you already have this number of population. Meaning to say, you are already way, way, way ahead of most towns in the Bigel region in terms of population. And for us among colonial historians, a population was actually a barometer of development in that particular period. The higher the population, the less, the greater is the propensity to develop. So, 1647, okay, same, okay. Now, let's go to the next. The earliest map that we have of Kagsawa. I haven't seen in my whole life as a historian any map of Kagsawa before 1814 eruption. So if you will notice, nakakaan sa itaas, bukin. Okay, may nakakaan po dyan na dalan, salog. So this is the river that you will see there. I was referring to that. Pagkatapos, <coughs> it was mentioned in Katangay I think it's in Kamali. Okay, so it's already mentioned on that particular uh, monte, then the names of the families who possessed lands in Kagsawa prior to the 1814 eruption. So, yun lang po sa available na mapa na nailing kong diman sa Archivo Franciscano Ibero Oriental. And the first map that we ever have of Kagsawa in, before the 1814 eruption. Very interesting. And as I said, when I was doing research in the Apio, Sabi ka itong Spaniard na Friday and binubukasan ni si bundles of documents, sabi niya, after 200 years, probably we are the first ones to touch these documents because nakabundle na, nag, nag, nagaragrag na si mga dokumento. Next slide, please. Ah, ini po. This is a petition written in Bicol. Kan mga kaninono in the 1721. So, nag-request nila na sangliana, yun na po nang tigis-celebrate tamo niya. Why? 1721 and yet 2024 because the building was completed in 1724. Apparently, three years after the petition was sent. So, ang sinasabi po niya, kay Rakan man doon na kami, mga taga-kagsawa, ta ang simbahan niya ngayon, ratin na ang mga poste. Gusto niya ngayon arugon ang struktura kan mga simbahan nearby particularly sa Kamalik because sabi niya ang Kamalik po da had already changed the use of materials from wood to rocks to stones especially corals so nag-request nila sa colonial government to allow you to get corals yan po sa Albaygol kaya lang nagkaigwa ng issue because si mga taga-ligas kaya hagong pakuruan nun si mga taga-digdiyong so buya na yan kaya kung hindi mag-branch so may kumpul lang si nga kong kwari so bawal na mag-kwari dun sa lugar na ito so yun ay very interesting ang issue imagine that as an issue that is been raging for more than 200 years ago so very interesting po so to tell you na ang chismis munyan lang na panahon kaya ito lang panahon na yung may araw na ako kayo sa right words okay so let's go to the next one para madalik lang po and just have a Anyway, you can read this video as well. Kung posterity of Kagsawa, 1814 Iraq siya natin growing. Sa iyo po nagkuha ang yaman ng Kagsawa. Actually, naging attractive. So, uh, first tourist destination kayo, kay Director Rano and si Mama Nag-Dorothy. Ang Kagsawa, kang mga outsiders, mga taga-mulo, ilo-ilo, they were residing here in Kagsawa. Apparently, 
because of the potentials of Kaksawa in terms of trade. Ano po ang possible na material? Sabi ng proso ang ping abaka. Contrary to popular belief that abaka bloomed in Albaya only happened in the 19th century, that's not true. As early as the 18th century, abaka was already a rising global commodity. Mahapot lang mo. Ano ang importansya kang abaka? Tanong sa naman ba yan? You have to remember na ang transportasyon kayo sa kinaaban, barko, galleons, and eventually steamships. And what does that mean? Kahit kuwan ta dyan mga sails, mga gakod sa mga mast, kahit kuwan lubi. Kahit kuwan ta ang gakod sa angkod, again, lubi. They were using the so-called kanyamo in South America. But they realized that it is very, very brittle. Unlike the abaca they found in Albany. So since then, naging major export product na kang albay ang abaka. And investors were residing here. Why here? Because accessible na maray sa albay go because of the river passing through Tagsawa. And rivers are important factors of development in the early Southeast Asia. In fact, may sa unaling uh, anthropologist, the German, na pinag-associate niya ang power sa Southeast Asia with one who controls the water. So sabi niya, if you look at old civilizations in the world, sa inyan makukuha sa mga kapahid kang river. Sa Mesopotamia, Mesopotomos, or two Greek words, means Meso, Middle, Potomos River. So middle of the river, yan ang duwang siyudad kang uh, Tigris and Euphrates nasa river. Sa India, Ganges River. Sa China, sa Yangtze River. Sa Pilipinas, Pasig River and the base of so, so wherever there are rivers are, there lies power. And that's the reason why ya on the view at Tapangyarian because they didn't go flow on the goods and also on mga tao na gaal. Kaya yun yung naman na maray Kagsawa. Okay? So sabi niya, the mistis of Ibrido in whose times the commerce in the province today rest are regularly residing in the town of Kagsawa. Ako po yes ko, hari po yan sa Paris, Christa ni Kagsawa, si Fray Francisco Aragoneses, who wrote his accounts in 1814 immediately after the eruption. So, pinagasabi ng mga taga Iloilo ang nag-i-install hindi sa uh, Kaksawa during the eruption. Mayor din din po sa mga locals. Can we go to the next section? Ano po, one of the earliest democratic records, 1751. Kung hiliwan po nila ang populasyon, okay, another bench, mas kitong kong basahon. Rimotos intero, so ang mga Spanish record ko dapat na ako abbreviation so dapat you must be able to live into the world so dapat familiar ka ng mga lingwae nila tributos enteros the taxes paid uh, personas tributantes the persons who are paying the tribute uh, okay razones por el um, por el reserva uh, reservados y intermedad so gusto sabi yun hindi kong exempted ka may mga pigeason naman po kaya ina akong nareserva mo They cannot pwedeng magbayad ng tax, they cannot, they cannot oblige na nagtrabaho sa forced labor kung ikaw po nag-abot ng 60 years old. So yan pa yung old age na yan na privilege. It goes back to the times of the Spaniards. So pag nag-edad ka ng 60, ang abot mo yan sa inyong reservate. So they cannot magbayad ng tax, exempted ka na nagtrabaho. So pag 60 ka na po, araw po lunta na sila, pako ng senior citizen, reservate. <laughs> okay. So reservate na po. So, pero po, ang populasyon po din, hiliwan po ninyo, ninyos di eskwelas. Pihira po kayo nag eskwela Pero hindi po sa inyo, sa Kagsawa, ang nag eskwela po is 380. Ngunit sabi yun, mayaman, halangkaw ang level kang kultura kang mga taga-Kagsawa. Even as early as 1751. And ang population nito, pero po, so man, 3,716 or 66 almas. That means 3,766 residents. Whereas in the 19th century, to be elevated into the category of a town, you only have 2,000 residents. Kamu po, as early as 1751, lampas na kamu maray sa requirement para maging banwaan. Gustong sabi yun, mayaman kamu maray. And this is it. Kamu po ang pinakatap ranking highest democratic recorded municipality sa Bicol. Bako lang sa Albay, sa Bicol. Pinaka-highest ang Kagsawa. Leading. So, let's ask. So, ini po. 1751. Pag 1775, Kagsawa sustained such lead. In the 1775 census, 
Tagsawahan, 6,352 sustained an upward development ng population. Gusto sabi, it continues to attract migrants sa Gilisalwar doon. And healthcare, in a way, gusto sabi yun, ang health condition nyo is comparatively better. Because yeah, I have also studied yan mga rural records na yan. Kung minsan mga banuaan at tiyos na maray, kalangkaw ng incidence ng death rate because kalangkaw ng hilang because kulang ang nutrition pa kung maray ang malamit. Kamudig kayo, magayon nyo. So, kaya po yan. Pag-abot po, tingin nyo, 1765, 1776,000 ang tagsawa. Ang kamalig na dating mother town niya, 6,100 na lang. Ang ligaw came with 5,300, buwas with 4,900. Pag initong mga towns na sa Albay, kamo po ang pinaka-leading na towns, even compared with the towns in Gabarina Sur, kamo ang pinakahalangkaw. And the highest was Pansi. Then, it was simple to the next time. Ikit naman lang po slide. Again, another population record. Ito po sa interior sa Southern Luzon, ang papiloy. At ayun po, ito po sa civil. Kaya, kumang po sa civil, if you don't believe it, may hiling do, including population kan mga baguan going back to 1600s. And so, may hiling na po dyan, kagsawa. Nakakan po dyan, ano ang kagsawa? 6,000 or 5,000 plus ang population kan 1794. The highest, again, in the entire uh, municipalities in the Bicol region. Imagine, for century, na sustain din do, sa indong lead sa population. Gusto ko sabi yun, sustain ang development of the sa Kagsawa. So, bako na po ng buladas, bako na po ng take news, based on archival records. Let me now, go to the next slide, please. So, ini po sa mga elot ng mga officials na available. 1781, may mga municipal officials na po. So, nakamensyon na po dyan. So, when you recap sa what? Gobernador. Ang gobernador po kayo is mayor. Kaya lang, na-realize kayo mga Spanyols, hindi kayo ang Indian ini, nakikipag-compete sa muya. Because gobernador is first house of gobernador general. So, ang pinagdagan nila din word na silio. Gobernador silio. Ang silio po sa Spanyol po sabi yung small. So, small governor. <laughs> para ang governor na title, para lang sa mga Spaniard. So, governor, Silvestre na lasang. Tinyente Mayor is the Vice Mayor. I think, uh, West Vicenteras. Ang West Vicenteras is not actually a judge, but is a counselor. So, mga counselors po, may kanya-kanya po itong designation ng mga counselors. West Vicenteras, ano pang role kang, anong Silvesteras field? Ang West Vicenteras, ang trabaho niya po is to settle dispute in terms of boundaries. Kaya alam ko ang issue kaya, what about if you are dealing with 10, 20 hectares? Paano may isa ng boundary? Sa Camarine Sur po, may nangyari kaya. Nagkaigwan ng issue ang Spaniard, sagot sa native, sa boundary, kansa ilang teritoryo. But the, the problem is, how do you measure the boundary when you are dealing with 10, 20 hectares? May solution si Governor, very, very wise si Governor. Ang ginibo niya, nagpa-install din kanyon, pinaputok si kanyon, kung sa inahulog si balak ng kanyon, ilang boundary. <laughs> so very ingenious method. Right? So, yeah. West di Bagamundos. Ano pa ang Bagamundos? The counselor assigned to track down mga itinerants, mga migrants who are undocumented migrants. So, Bagamundo ka, if you have no permanent address, you just roam around. Ano po ang dahilan ta? Kaya po ang i-check kung isa ay mga nagpaparalipat-lipat lang na i-documented. Duwang reason po. Sa loob pong reason is because baka kriminal yan, naghali sa ibang banuaan, nag-transfer yan. Ikadawa po, ilang interesting thing. Baka mahilig yan. <laughs> mahilig po tayo. Ito po ang tradisyon. Pag nag-agong sa ang banuaan, after two years, papalipot-liputon lang, mali man nung sa banuaan, maagong na naman. <laughs> and notorious po kita mga dikulano ganyan. I was reading the sermon in Spain as early as 1684. Sabi kan prayer sa mga dikulano, tulong nga yan, mayor na ka sa alindo. Ang mga dikulano, ano yan? Para inong, para sugal, para babae. <laughs> so, 1684, that's already part of our heritage. Kaya, yan. Kaya po ang bagamundo. <laughs> so, reason din po to the counselor to track down in yung mga mga, mga babae ro as yung mga tarahanap ng mga. So, yan. Ang kasing bagamundo is divine over the affair. So, basically, yan po ang ang trabaho ng mga. Tapos, may ilig na po, ikuha na po ka muna yung mga bisita. Meaning to say, may mga baryo na kamo Because during this particular period, mga 1780s na, kadaklang kan banuaan, mayo yung baryo. Because they have a small jurisdiction din. But you have here, bisita di Lakab, bisita di Burabod. The next slide, please. 
Sumayilis pa kayo ng mga bago ang sa inyong ganuaan. Isita di ka po sa mga barangay na po yan. Isita ni Mabili, na ako na po yan. Isita di Daraka, they were already existing as early as 1781. So, meaning to say, takulaon ang area ng ganuaan nito. So, yan po, drawing yan, itong sa French na nagdisal ba ay digdis sa daraga. Gusto yung sabi, eleganting maray ang bado kang mga taga-daraga at kos pa ko pagsawa sa daraga ng Diyos, late 19th century. And sabi may amano na maray ang daraga as evident in the clothing, in the attire of the women of the world. And generally po na, kanakon na kayong parties, regular lang pa-party ang mga taga-daraga, o sabi yung may amano na maray. Actual po yan, bako po yan, modern na painting, that's an old 19th century portrait or painting of the women of the world. Let me go to the next slide, please. Para madalik-dalik na. Okay. 210 years. Ano pang i-celebrate ha? So, nag-celebrate po kita yung 300 years. Nag-celebrate kita kang 437 years of founding of Asa Mission. 300 years as the reconstruction of the subsisting church. Then, 210 years of the 1814 eruption. Ini po, sa usapan at pinakainot na picture na nahiling ko, ako na po sa kagsawa ko ni sa Daraga. Kaya na, this is 1890s na Prato, kanito yung Franciscan Friar na assigned sa Daraga. Kung hindi yung pundo, yung background niya yan, Daraga Church po yan. So, the earliest so far, na tayo itong surfing, I think it was in 1938, pero this was in 1898. So, very, very old photograph. So, yan. Nag-transfer po kamo sa Daraga. So, ano po ito nag-transfer? Okay. Let me see you sa next slide po. Nagkaiba po kayo itong eleksyon. Iyon po, iso, counting po yan. Nag-go kayo sila nag-noon nagtatali. 289 sa Daraga, 138 sa Kunya. Ano po, nagkaiba ang assembly kayo sa 1767. Mahari nga kita nabi sa Kagsawa. Taang dahilan po nila kang 1767, nagkaiba ni eruption ang mayon. Apart from one of the earliest massive and destructive eruptions that they experienced in the in the entire life that they had here in Antarctica, 1767. And anong sarong problema po? Yung river pong yan yan naklad kan sa mga kapu na halik sa mayon. So na takot si mga tao. Another thing sabi nila, kuminsan po na when mayon erupts, and river yan nag overflow and it goes to the town. So they eventually decide let's transfer. So there was an election. Pigtali din na. So, 282 sa Daraga, sa Lakag, sa Kulyat, 138. So, they decided sa Daraga. But it was never carried out. Had it been carried out, then there would have been no casualty in Tagsawa in 1814. Why? Nag-intervene itong governor who hates the Paris priest, Pry Juan Duarez, at Tagsawa. Ang good siyang maray ki Pry Juan Duarez. So instead na ma-realize ma ang transfer, sabi niya, no, no, like about transfer, I'm going to give you a town yan sa Budyaw. Yan Budyaw na yan, hindi buuntang banwaan, I'll assign a priest there, you'll be exempted from paying taxes if you transfer them. So talagang pakulog lang siyang payo duman sa Paris priest ng Kansawa. So nag-decide sila na mag-transfer doon and create Budyaw into a town. Unfortunately, you know, in history, ang pinakagrating casualty was not in Kansawa. It was in Budyaw. Mas gulpisin na gadaan sa Budyaw isa din din sa Kansawa. So, yan ang po ang facts based on the records. So, kayo siya na nakatransfer. So, yan po siya na nangyari. Okay? Can we go to the next slide? So, hindi po si Dailan. Ayan, of course, sa libro po, you will find that. Na habong mag-transfer because si Perminsan Vibar nakilabot, nakiaram na dahil siya na nag-transfer. So, kaya, yan. So, yan po si the description can see what happened to you because why it failed to transfer and drill it. Let me go to the next slide. Pero po sa pinaka-enop na mapa kang albay na available doon sa Afio, may kung gaya kayo nag-aaram sa Pilipinas. When I was doing my research there, when we opened that, sabi ni Pai Cayetano Sanchez Fuertes, Cayetano Sanchez Fuertes was the last Franciscan, Spanish Franciscan prior assigned in Kamalik. So, pada nga ito may maray ang kamali. Way back in the 70s, nagkurangan na siyang maray. And kaya binuksan niya si bundles ng documents about ngayong volcano. Pero tulad sa natin yung nambad sa muya, ining painting na map kang albay kang 
Dahil po, it's a very, very big map. Aros ka pariyo po. Kaya sa kanina yan, kadakula si Mapa. The growing can si Paris Christ in the year. And it's a very beautiful map. Probably that we will use that as the cover of the book. And we can add some more. So, yan po siya nakakaigyan sa mga. And he was describing, si Father Aragones was describing what happened. Well, there were some speculations that there were about 1,200 who died. But I had strong doubts about that in terms of the population at the time. Paguna ko pa ko kung talagang medyo sabihin pa ngayon. Maluyan po takan mga tao na mag-stay dyan sa lugar na yan. It's a popular myth that seems to perpetuate the idea that sa mga tao kabuyubong maraya, aram na nag-iirap, dahil nag-durulan, I don't think it's like that. I think many of them escaped. Kaya lang, one of the reasons why it was in some way unreported sa lang kaon si Magkagaladan, one possible reasons I'm toying with is si Pray Aragones was probably padding the records. Why? Because he was soliciting support from Manila. So isipin mo kung sabi mo, ang nagadan po nilis ang pulo, ay sa isang pataw sa inyong tabang. So sabi mo, 1,200, ay tarabang kita, tagrami ni Kadanda. So it appears na based on the available statistics after the eruption, it was not as big as now. And as I said, Ininkad sa wawas na ruined the way it was told to us. It was actually intact. In fact, much of the people they wanted to stay here even after the 18th election. But then the prior prevailed said because they already built a church there as early as 1770. Nagprepare na mga private din simbahan naman because sabi nga, in 1767, they already foretold the possibility of another casual, another catastrophic eruption. So they already built despite the refusal of the governor and the residency, some residency, he already built a church there in Daraga. So Daraga was actually, if you are going to record the foundation, it could be said that Daraga's settlement already began as early as 1770s. But actual transfer happened only after 1814, when the church, when people decided later on to vacate this place because of the possible corruption, casualty that would happen subsequently. Last few slides po. So, ini po si report ni Pray Aragoneses. This is the original document. Suceso espantoso e memorable a caicido in the provincia de Camarines el día primero de febrero. So, on the first day of February of this present year, 1814, Suceso espantoso. Writing event. And memorable that happened in the province. Siya po ang translation po. So, he was telling us a story what happened during the eruption. Nagali po na ang kataklan po nagadaan ni Pete, pero there are really die here. So, bako po talaga itong salatang sinamaan. Apparently, they were by poison gas. Sabi niya di ba, they were skating, but there was a powerful wind in which people in him that they simply collapsed. But that is a little bit sa kansawa. Ang pigisabi ni Pray Aragones, the entire albay na po. So, yun. Finally, Ayan na po si Simbahan. Sabi ko, ang kare-crasper na po. Ano ang description ng lugar? The present site was located on a small isolated hill composed of a mixture of lava from the volcano and would speak a church was constructed. Partly of stone and the rest of wood. Since the town was new, the few houses seemed to have been made provisionally except for some which were made of wood which increased the risk for the frequency of fire out there. So, hindi na po sa daraga na po niyo. Relocate na naman, 1823, almost about 7 years after they relocated, or 7 or 8 years, yun na po yan sa pagpuni ka, panwaan ka ng mga ka. Lastly, pero ang slides na lang po. One or two, can we go to the next slide, please? An 1817 Episcopal Dissertation Report. So, after several years na po ng ano, ang 1814, mga three years after ang si eruption, sabi niya, notwithstanding its ancient church of nine suffered similar damage incurred by the previous na. So, ang tagsawa po na, suffered damage. Similar to the damage suffered by Kamalig. So, gusto sabi, may mga po talaga grabe si damage hindi. Kapaliban Kamalig, ang nangyari. So, but it has another church building. So, ang yan, kagayunan ng kuda, na na-damage hindi sa lugar, may church building na nag-i-exist. Which is, Located, convenient located in another side, which as an effective precaution for the said eruption, a religious with a foresight was the parish priest of this town, si Pray Aragoneses, has constructed built of stone and is spacious. So, bago pa po, akan si eruption, nagpatuloy siya sa pahal. So, by foresight, 
Next. Ah, ini po ang karitera del sur. For you to understand, ano ta nag-develop na marayang albay? Originally po, ang biyahe ka ito, nag sa Bicol River. So, if you are traveling from um, Camarines Norte, you wanted to go to Albay, the only way for you to reach Albay is to travel by the Bicol River. Ali is San Miguel Bay, you travel by the Bicol River, and you go to Agos sa Rey Bato, and Pulangi, and then off, you reach this particular part of Kansawa, and then you go to Sawangan, and Albay go. Kaya nga at one time, when I was doing research in the archives in Lisbon, then in Spain, uh, may sarong report naman after the Magellan expedition, 1523. So, two years after the Magellan, Magellan died in Mactan. Itong sarong Spaniard naman, hinapot niya sa mga Tagasibo. Imagine, two years after Magellan died. Sa inyo, ito parang kung dahon na yaman yung doong bulawan. Ano mga sabi niya nila? Sa Albay. Imagine, Tagasibo were getting their gold from Albay. So, it's a myth na ang Albay was only named from the word Albay. Spanish era, no. It appears that Albay was already named long before the Spaniards arrived. So Albay is not a Spanish name, but a native name. And you are rich in gold long before the coming of Magellan. So, tano po tayo araw kayan? Because my river, nag-aagi sa river. Pero, ang problema po, nag-change ng transportation. Pag 1845, Nagkaigwa na po kayo nga po na Plano General de la Carretera del Sur, South Road, from Plaza Rizal in Naga, until Ligaste, tinampo na po yan. Dahil na sa river. So, ang may effect po yan, sabi ko, history teaches us a lot of lesson. Dati po, Milaor, Bula, Minalabak, Nabuwa, area niyan. Yan si pinakamayayaman, halangkaw ng population, even higher than Kansawa before. Pero ka nagpaulang po mag-change kang mode of transportation, nagtiyos ang gula, milaor, minalabak, ang nagyaman ang pili. Why? Because ang pili, entry point na pasiring sa partido and pasiring sa rinconada, pasiring sa alabay. So, planners, all urban planners should study not only the construction of a road, but also the impact of that road, economically and culturally. Takulaan na bagay po ang road ng history. So, yan po ang nangyari. Because of this road, si mga panuhaan po ng Albay nagkasararo na. Kaya nag-consolidate ang resources ng Albay and Albay by 1845, 1850 became one of the richest provinces if not the richest province in the entire Philippines. Until 1925 po yan. Kamu ang pinakamayaman na probinsya. Kaya maintindihan po niyo, kadakong mistiso and mistiso sa Albay. Why? Because as early as 1860s, nagkaigawa na kamong international port. Dahil na kayo po ang magpamanila kung nabiyahe. You just come over to Albay and take your boat here and off you are in Europe. Many foreigners resided in Albay. Europeans, Portuguese, British, Spaniards were residing here. Kaya very affluent, very cultured ang mga Albayano because of the boom. 1925, puminagsak ang abaka industry. Why? Because the Americans realized it's very, very expensive to import abaka from Albay. So they invented the nylon fiber. And because of that, nagbagsak ang ekonomiya ng Albay until decades after. Siguro tapos. Alam ko lang, kung iba pa kung ano, maglagmaan naman po ang style. Can we go to the next? Next slide, please, Pana. Okay. This is our family. Tentative na po yan. Si Mayor Rapa, we have talked about it. Thank you very much, Paul.